Good evening uh, to everyone. Uh, my name is Lloyd Tucker once again. I'm the director of Fairfax County Department of Neighborhood and Community Services. And I want to uh, thank you all for joining us here once again, finally live uh, after the uh, years of uh, hiatus from the in-person uh, program that we've done uh, because of COVID. Uh, but first, and if you don't mind, Chairman, I'd like to introduce uh, Chairman McKay, who's joining us today. Our Supervisor Palchek from Providence District. <laughs> Supervisor Rodney Lusk from Franconia District. <laughs> Supervisor James Walkinshaw from Braddock District. <laughs> Supervisor Dan Stork from Mount Vernon District. Supervisor Harity from the Springfield District. And Supervisor Smith from the Sully District. And I would be remiss if I didn't uh, introduce and say thank you for coming to our uh, Fairfax County uh, Government County Executive, Mr. Brian Hill. and our very own Fairfax County Public Schools Superintendent, Dr. Reed. So thank you for your patience and bearing with me through, uh, through those five minutes. I will not uh, hesitate any longer to introduce the president of our Fairfax County um, Athletic Council, Ms. Lula Bauer. Welcome, welcome. I so enjoyed the reception. I saw so many people that I haven't seen in, in a while. Um, I saw somebody I saw last weekend at the WAGS tournament, Joan Smith and her husband. So great to see you all here. So my name is Lula Bauer. I'm the chairwoman of the Fairfax County Athletic Council. So I wanna share with you a little bit about what the Athletic Council does. The Athletic Council serves in an advisory capacity to the Board of Supervisors the Department of Neighborhood and Community Services, the Park Authority, and the School Board on Sports Matters. The Council is comprised of 32 voting members. We advise on policies as well as establish priorities for enhancing availabilities of sports programs to the citizens of Fairfax County. The Athletic Council also advocates for our sports programs. For example, last year, the Fairfax County Athletic Council identified inequity of diamond fields between the boys and the girls' um, fields. This year, the Athletic Council successfully advocated for funding to reduce the inequity, and currently, there was mass improvement, there is mass improvement being made on the girls' softball diamonds. Out of all the advocating, Out of all the advocating, advising on policy, enhancing sports programs, we take great pride in sponsoring this event, the Stephen A. McLaughlin Champions of Character Awards. This award recognizes those that have gone above and beyond in demonstrating good character and sportsmanship. And at this time, if there's any Athletic Council members, I'd like for you to stand, please. Stand, please, thank you very much. I wanted to thank you all for your service and for your commitment to the Fairfax County Athletic Council. So next I'd like to introduce to you Chairman McKay. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you all for being here uh, this evening to celebrate our champions of character. Um, and let me begin by uh, confessing at the beginning of this that my favorite thing to do 
uh, every week is to go to my kids' soccer games and my daughter's dance competitions in high school. I know all of you thought my favorite thing was spending countless hours in here listening to public hearings and listening to uh, constituents testify, but I do think that our athletic programs, uh, both from a kid and parent's perspective, um, are so important to our quality of life here in Fairfax County. And for those of you uh, who know me, you know that I've lived in the county my entire life, and some of my best memories as a kid we're playing in our youth clubs, uh, some of which have different names now. I know that doesn't make me old, uh, but I can remember like yesterday playing in Woodlawn Little League, which just still exists, um, as a kid all through my baseball years, playing in what was then called the Mount Vernon Youth Athletic Association basketball program uh, for many years. And when I wasn't doing that, uh, enjoyed playing countless years of soccer uh, with what was then called Lee Mount Vernon Sports Club. Um, which of course now is slightly different name. And so I say all that to you because um, it made a profound difference in, in the way in which I approach life, uh, frankly. And, and as we sit here in the board auditorium, I can tell you as chairman of this board, no one of us can get anything done. It takes a team of people back here to do anything. It takes at least six people uh, to agree to pass anything in this county. And so that collaboration, uh, that sportsmanship with each other, that building relationships, uh, sometimes winning and sometimes losing uh, votes, just like sometimes in life you win and lose things, is so well learned on the athletic field. And I know I see it at, at every one of the games that I go to. Uh, when I was looking through uh, the very characteristics that people are getting awarded for tonight, um, I, I was drawn right to the parents one. And the very first thing is being respectful to players, coaches, and game officials. And every parent's probably come close uh, to, to violating that, uh, certainly in our kids' eyes as we embarrass our kids uh, from the sidelines. Um, but I think it is something important for all of us to take into consideration uh, as we approach the field because how we treat each other and how we treat the officials and the coaches um, is indicative to how we're going to treat people uh, throughout our lives. And so real lessons getting learned on the turf, on the grass, on the courts, wherever you are, uh, each and every time a game is played. And so I do want to pay tribute uh, to Stephen McLaughlin. The, the bio is in here of the amazing number of years uh, contributed to this county. And, and in that light, I want to thank his family uh, for giving up so many. And, the phone is ringing. The family's phone is ringing. Uh, so I was going to say how busy these folks were. They were giving up uh, time from their life uh, to participate. And, and any one of you who is a coach, uh, a parent, a volunteer, someone involved in one of our leagues knows that for you to be able to do all of those things uh, takes your family's support to be able to dedicate that amount of time uh, as chief volunteers and supporters of our county. And so uh, in that light, I also want to thank all the members of the Athletic Council, the parents, the coaches, and the leagues, and our high schools and middle schools. And, and I, I say this is important because so much of what we value in Fairfax County is the quality of our Fairfax County public schools and the activities that they offer are so vital to the overall quality of our community. But that sportsmanship that makes its way through our high school years uh, comes about because there's a lot of leagues in this county in every corner of the county that dedicate themselves to raising our children in a sports environment. So I want to thank all the leagues, all the folks who volunteer. I volunteered as a coach, a fundraiser, all the different things in our leagues, and I know it takes a lot uh, out of the parents to make that happen as well. And the coaches, um, you know, the, having coached a few teams of my own, uh, very young kids, hard to even get them to pay any attention to you. Um, but I know the work that they do in building character uh, which is what here we are here to celebrate tonight is so important uh, to our community as well. And so on behalf of the Board of Supervisors, I want to congratulate uh, each and every one of the award winners tonight um, and reading through the program, uh, seeing all the names on here from all the diverse sports and all the gender sports that are out there uh, in this county and opportunities that offer our kids is just absolutely amazing. So thank you for having me. Thank you, Chairman McKay. Next, I'd like to introduce to you Brian Hill, our County Executive. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Stephen A. McLaughlin Champions of Character, McLaughlin family. Thank you for being here. You know, as Lloyd Tucker stated, he uh, was a chubby kid, so was I. I uh, 
sixth grade, I played left tackle. And my freshman year in high school, I was a power forward. My sophomore year in high school, I was a point guard. I thank my mother every day, who's five foot three for my height. <laughs> but it was a learning experience. I played football, played soccer, played basketball. It's all about teamwork, and it's all about respect and how you get the job done. We have to work together. So first and foremost, I want to thank the parents for allowing your children to be a part of this. I want to thank the coaches, many of whom I did not listen to, but I understand that you guys were here to ensure that we were the best that we possibly can be. And I want to also thank the players. The people getting recognized today, various sports, gymnastics, lacrosse, soccer, basketball, baseball, softball, football, volleyball, track, field hockey, wrestling, and swimming. All of you deserve a congratulations. Thank you for allowing me to be here. I hope you have a great evening tonight. Lloyd, I like the fact that you said you were the chubby kid. <laughs> but you also are a great leader in NCS. And all the NCS staff, if you were here, could you please stand? Thank you. And I got to say this about this one gentleman in NCS. Every time I have a hard day, I get an email from Travis Middleton. So Travis, thank you for keep doing what you do for me. Uh, you, you keep me smiling every morning when I see those emails. So everybody, it's, it is about team. We're 15,000 strong here. Thank you to the Board of Supervisors for allowing us to put these events forward. Channel 16, Rebecca Makeley, thank you. Guys on camera, thank you as well. I wish you all a good evening. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Brian. Next, I'd like to introduce Mark Miena for a special presentation to the McLaughlin family. That's a great crew to follow up from. Thank you all, appreciate that. Um, I do wanna say that uh, as a member of the Athletic Council, certainly tonight uh, is an Athletic Council event of recognition and congratulations to every winner, adult and youth. It's, uh, it's tremendous what we've seen through the years and what we're seeing, gonna see here tonight. I also wanna thank the elected Board of Supervisors because they come to a lot of events. They really do, and as you know, elected officials, yeah, they have to do that, especially this time of year. Um, but they really sincerely do, all of them. They really come and they engage, and it, it gets lost sometimes. So we're fortunate, and I can say that. Politics has nothing to do with it. It's, it's the, just what Jeff was saying, um, the participation. And so I have, I have the honor and the privilege of recognizing, a, well, he's a good friend, and, and uh, worked with Steve McLaughlin at the Athletic Council for decades. And, uh, you know, this, uh, the awards being renamed after him is, is just absolutely fabulous because it was him. So I'm going to read a couple of things. I'm going to regurgitate, which is on page two, a little bit. And then we're going to get to a special award we have here tonight. The Champions of Character uh, ceremony has been renamed in honor of Stephen A. McLaughlin, past Pro uh, Providence District representative to the Athletic Council, who suddenly passed away, a great loss to many. Mr. McLaughlin's service on the Athletic Council began when he was appointed by then Providence Supervisor Jerry Connolly, and he represented uh, that position on the Council for 26 years. Unfortunately, Congressman Connolly could not be here tonight because of some routine vote they were taking today. I, I didn't get a lot of details on Capitol Hill as, as, as we speak. It's an unfortunate because uh, Steve was very close to him. Uh, as a close friend, he relied heavily on his input from the people he represented in his district to sports uh, and, and what was happening in the world and what maybe needed adjustment. The Congressman passes on his enthusiastic support to the family and as they uh, see this annual recognition of this award ceremony now named in his honor. In his role on the Athletic Council, Steve championed and promoted logic, consensus, and strategies when resolving the ever-increasing challenges facing youth and adult sports today. He was a calming and effective influencer. 
The Stephen A. McLaughlin Fairfax County Champions of Character Award program honors the outstanding performances of youth players, coaches, and parents for their extraordinary accomplishments in pursuing victory with honor on and off the field of competition. This, uh, the Athletic Council supports the tradition of amateur sports in cultivating teamwork, leadership, good sportsmanship, and community service. These traits define Steve, so it's, it's, it's natural that, that he has his name on him. Awards are presented to an outstanding male and female athlete, coach, and a parent volunteer, which you've already heard. In each supervisory district, for having demonstrated extraordinary service in the athletic community while modeling the basic traits of good character, respect, responsibility, caring, trustworthiness, citizenship, and fairness. These are the values Steve truly believed and defined his passion that will live on through these annual award winners. I am confident that another Steve McLaughlin is in the audience tonight and will soon surface years down the road. And now, I think I would like to announce that we're having a special award that was developed that we be, will be presented to one person each year that represents basically all of what I just read and then some. And I'd like to ask the McLaughlin family, if you would, come up and join us right here, if you wouldn't mind. And I would like to ask the members of the Board of Supervisors to come down if they would, to surround them if they would. Stand up. Stephen A. McLaughlin, Champions of Character Award. The inaugural recipient of this prestigious award is presented to those closest to Steve. They provided the support needed as he promoted the guiding principles to all athletes and volunteer citizens of Fairfax County. Steve, Steve's legacy lives on through this annual award and will be presented to those that continue to cultivate teamwork, leadership, good sportsmanship, and community service. And that's what he was about. And these people right here allowed him to do that for the decades and decades he came to the meetings. And with that, Karen, his wife, here, would you come up and stand in front of me? <laughs> <laughs> we don't stand in front of Go ahead. Look at the this is your award. Look at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thank you all. Would you, would you like to say something? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Did, all right. I think Steve called, that was that call, and said, hey, just say thank you. <laughs> okay, Lou. All right, returning to Lou. Here we go. Thank you so much, and congratulations. Now, can we get to the good part? recognizing our recipients. <clears throat> I'd like to invite Supervisor James Walkinshaw and Marsha Pape Daniels to present the Braddock Road District Awards. Marsha, there you are. I will. Good evening, everyone. Um, as soon as I announce the winner's name, and it'll be the same for everybody who does this, uh, if the winners would proceed down and take their place right over here. Uh, the first winner in the Braddock District for female athlete is Karen Susson. Is Karen here? She's not here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and read just a few things about her anyway. 
As a dedicated member of the Lake Braddock varsity gymnastics team, Catherine served as captain for two of her four years on the team. Catherine focused on creating a welcoming team environment, organized team bonding activities, and led several successful fundraising efforts. Catherine always worked very hard, pushing herself to give 100% at every practice. She was incredibly reliable, always the first to arrive at practice and the last to leave. Catherine's sportsmanship and willingness to sacrifice for the team was apparent during a state competition when she selflessly stepped in and competed in the place of an injured teammate. Outside of gymnastics, Catherine was an outstanding student at Lake Braddock Secondary School. She was involved in student government, key club, and the National Honor Society. Her commitment to both her sport and her teammates her leadership qualities and willingness to step in and contribute whenever and wherever needed makes Catherine a deserving recipient of the Stephen A. McLaughlin Champions of Character Award. The male athlete from the Braddock District is Daniel Baloney. Daniel? Daniel has played multiple sports over the years, including soccer, track, flag football, basketball, and lacrosse. He's a successful student athlete at Lake Braddock Secondary School. He is a model citizen who prioritizes his commitment to community service. For Daniel's Eagle Scout project, and this is how Supervisor Watkinshaw and I met him, he organized a blood drive and a coat drive. His courteous and respectful approach to community outreach was apparent as he led these two very successful community projects. Daniel serves as a lifeguard at his neighborhood pool, where he's known for his trustworthiness and respect for all patrons. Daniel patiently teaches swimming schools skills to younger children, earning their trust and respect as he teaches them to safely enjoy the water. Daniel is a popular neighborhood babysitter and serves as an excellent role model. Thank you, Daniel. For coach, we actually have a tag team of coaches, Doug Alcorn and Max Squires. Braddock Road Youth Club is fortunate to have a group of dedicated parents whose children have moved out beyond the realm of youth sports. Despite their own children aging out, these parent volunteers persist in contributing to BRYC, ensuring that today's youth receive the same opportunities for participation that past generations enjoyed. Doug and Mac have played numerous roles within BRYC recreational soccer, showcasing a commitment to creating positive experiences for the U16 and U19 girls they coach. Their coaching philosophy and rapport with the players have left a lasting and positive impression. Annually in December, Doug and Mac ensure the scheduling of an alumni game, consistently drawing a significant turnout. Going beyond the field, the coaches introduce enjoyable activities for the girls after each home game, culminating in a gathering at the local Dairy Queen for players and parents. This thoughtful approach ensures that, regardless of a game's outcome, Everyone departs with smiles on their faces. Doug and Mac's ongoing dedication and innovative contributions make them invaluable assets to the BRYC community. Thank you, Mac and Doug. And our parent volunteer is Elizabeth Giuliani. I'm going to continue along the same theme. 
even though her kids have moved on, Elizabeth remains a crucial contributor to the Braddock Road Youth Club, serving as a member at large on the BRYC board and taking on roles as a soccer referee and as the longtime budget director for BRYC Recreational Soccer, not an easy task, I can tell you from experience. Um, Elizabeth plays a key role in the club's activities. A notable accomplishment includes modernizing BRYC soccer by transitioning from traditional cash payments to an online system. Elizabeth quickly understands new systems and with patience, trains and assists everyone in adapting to the updated procedures. Elizabeth's ongoing dedication and transformative contributions make her an outstanding candidate for recognition and a vital part of BRYC. I'd like to thank these outstanding winners from the Braddock District. Yeah. Congratulations. Now I'd like to invite Chairman McKay and Greg Beckwith to present the Drainsville District. Good evening. My name is Greg Beckwith. I represent the uh, Drainsville District. I understand the Supervisor Faust could not be here tonight. Uh, disappointed in that respect and may have been one of his last official tasks. But in any event, um, I'd like to introduce the female athlete for the Drainsville District, Riley Losick. I had the pleasure of talking to Riley um, before the event. Riley's prowess as an athlete is undeniable, but her impact goes far beyond the playing field. In every endeavor, Riley infuses joy, elevating the spirit in the gym, and creating an infect infectious atmosphere. Just so you know, she's associated with Great Falls basketball, so I'm telling you the sport, as, a, as her bio is not fully apparent in that regard. Her gym and, and creating an infectious atmosphere, her unwavering support for teammates is a constant in demonstrating her commitment to the collective success of the team. Notably, Riley extends the same sportsmanship to opponents, fostering a positive environment during shared practices and competitive games alike. This thoughtful enthusiasm hasn't gone unnoticed. Coaches, game officials, league officials, alike have all acknowledged Riley's remarkable ability to bring a consistent, inclusive, and positive influence on Great Falls basketball. Her exceptional qualities make her not just a standout athlete, but a genuine force for the goodwill and sportsmanship in the sports community. We thank you. I'd like to next introduce the male athlete, Luca Sanchez. Thank you, Luca. <clears throat> and his sport is swimming. Luca is an exceptional athlete and a remarkable role model within the Langley Swim Club, holding seven individual records and securing the club championship title for four consecutive years. Luca's prowess in swimming is commendable. What is more impressive is that he extends his support beyond personal achievements, actively assisting his teammates and dedicating time to volunteer with the many wild things where he helps younger children learn how to swim. Outside the pool, Luca engages in various impactful roles. He serves as a high school representative to the Fairfax County Student Unit Human Rights Commission. He holds the position of underclassman officer in the African American Alliance. 
He serves as the outreach director of the Forever Young Club supporting nursing home residents and contributes as an online tutor for MeaningfulTeen.org, a global nonprofit organization dedicated to assisting unrepresented groups. Luca's multifaceted contributions both within and beyond the sports community underscore his exceptional commitment and make him a deserving champion of character award winner. Thank you, Luca. The next is a gentleman that I admire. Um, I'm introducing the coach, Craig Cook. He's not only a coach, but an umpire. After almost two decades of devoted service, Craig Cook recently retired as the chief umpire for Great Falls Little League. Year after year, he consistently manned the ball fields, enduring various weather conditions and even overcoming injuries, displaying an impressive resilience. With unwavering dedication, Craig volunteered timelessly, often umpiring seven days a week, overseeing over a thousand games and providing crucial training to many other young officials. In addition to his umpiring role, Craig emerged as an exceptional mentor and role model for thousands of players and youth umpires. He embodied values such as respect, responsibility, caring, trustworthiness, citizenship, and empathy, setting a high standard for those around him. Craig not only lived by these principles, but also expected others to do the same, cultivating a culture of integrity and sportsmanship. Craig Cook's retirement signifies the conclusion of an era marked by unparalleled dedication and advocacy for the youth in our community. His influence stretches beyond the ball fields, leaving a lasting impression on the lives he touched and standing as a testament to the impact of selfless service and mentorship. Congratulations, Craig. And Last person to introduce is the parent, Patricia Walker. <laughs> Part of Glory Fast Pitch Softball. Patricia is an exceptional parent, akin to a rock star in her ability to tackle any task with a smile and boundless energy. Renowned as the go-to person among parents, Patty ensures that coaches can rely on her to get things done, allowing for the coaches to focus on their coaching and their teams. Her effectiveness goes beyond expectations as she not only accomplishes what is required, but goes above and beyond. Possessing the energy of at least five people, Patty performs her duties with a caring and kind demeanor. Undoubtedly, she stands as a team superpower and remarkable contributions that deserve acknowledgement. Congratulations. I would like to now invite Supervi Supervisor Rodney Lusk and Bill Bright to present the Franconia District. There you are. Good evening, I'm Bill Bright. I am representative on the Athletic Council from Franconia District. Uh, we're gonna start tonight with our female athlete, Maya Cook. Maya not only showcases exceptional softball skills, but also embodies outstanding character traits. She stands as a model of trustworthy, trustworthiness, selflessness, encouragement, and kindness, setting a high standard for sportsmanship. As the consummate teammate, Maya consistently strives to improve both herself and her fellow team members, fostering a positive and supportive team dynamic. Her commitment to excellence, both on and off the field, makes her a deserving recipient of the Champions of Character Award. Our 
Our male athlete from Franconia District is Urban Ramirez. <laughs> Urban's coaches unanimously attest to his dependability, that his dependability is unparalleled. He stands out as a player that they can consistently rely on, always present, meticulously prepared, and committed to giving his all on the field. Urban approaches his responsibilities with a level of seriousness that sets a standard for the entire team. His exceptional reliability and trustworthiness exert a profound influence on the team's dynamics and performance, establishing him as an invaluable asset to the collective success and spirit of the team. Urban's enduring commitment to excellence makes him a standout and a worthy Champions of Character recipient. Our Franconia coach recipient this year is Chris Larson. Coach Larson's impactful tenure at Lee Mount Vernon Soccer Club spans over a decade, during which he has not only demonstrated coaching prowess, but also a remarkable commitment to the players and the community. This season's coach, at times managing up to three teams in a single season, imparts his guidance with grace, compassion, and unwavering integrity. Coach Larson's coaching philosophy goes beyond winning. He instills in his players the values of competing with determination, putting in effort, and most importantly, deriving joy from the game. For him, the players' growth and enjoyment take precedent. Throughout his tenure with Lee Mount Vernon Soccer Club, Coach Larson has been a shining example of the best our community has to offer. His tireless efforts, dedication to player development, and compassionate advocacy for individuals facing challenges makes him a standout figure in youth sports. Thank you. <clears throat> and finally, our parent representative tonight is Korea Smith. Korea Smith is a devoted community advocate with an unwavering passion for service. Over the years, she has assumed crucial roles such as travel soccer team manager, team manager coordinator, and state registrar, showcasing her commitment to enhancing the community's sports infrastructure. Beyond her official capacities, Korea willingly dedicates her time to training fellow volunteers, contributing to the collective growth of the community. Her leadership is a shining example of the positive impact that engaged volunteers can have on children of our community. Korea's multifaceted involvement creates a ripple effect, expanding opportunities and enriching the lives of our youth. Her dedication to fostering an environment where every child can thrive is truly commendable and sets a high standard for community service. Korea Smith's impact goes far beyond her titles. She's a catalyst for positive change an invaluable asset to our community. Congratulations. I'd like to now continue to invite Chairman McKay and Jeremy Lee to present the Hunter Mill District recipients. Is Jeremy here? Hi, Jeremy. Uh, it's a pleasure to be representing the Hunter Mill District, and uh, I'd like to start off by announcing our female athlete, Noor Atia. Nor is an exemplary student athlete showcasing exceptional dedication both on and off the basketball court. Her remarkable qualities include kindness, respectfulness, determination, and strong motivation to excel. As an honor student, Nor has not only achieved academic success, but has also earned the admiration and respect of her coaches and peers. Her commitment to excellence, positive attributes, 
also make her a deserving winner of the Champions of Character Award. Thank you. Congratulations, Nora. The Hunter Mill District male athlete is Andrew Carroll. Andrew is a true example of hard work and determination. Even in elementary school, he showed commitment by setting his alarm to do sprints before school and touch-up sessions after school. Andrew not only sets goals, but also consistently follows through with them. His dedication extends to his team, where he takes charge in case of coach delays, leading warm-up drills, and starting practice sessions. His outstanding work ethic and constant drive to improve set a challenging standard for others, motivating them to match his level of commitment. Andrew's disciplined, focused, and mature approach defines him as a genuine leader. Across the board, Andrew's exceptional qualities make him an outstanding candidate for recognition, embodying true leadership and unwavering commitment. Congratulations, Andrew. The Hunter Mill District Coach Awardee is Randy McCarga. Fortunately, Randy couldn't join us tonight. So we'll move on to the Hunter Mill parent, Amber Klusner. Over the past year, Amber has served the Vienna Girls Softball League in multiple vital roles, including VGSL president, coach for 8U and 18U teams, and skills coach for catchers in upper age divisions. As a coach, Amber prioritizes her players' well-being and development, placing it above competitiveness. Her unwavering dedication and genuine care for the children of VGSL contribute to fostering teamwork, responsibility, and a sense of fairness. Amber approaches players facing personal tr struggles with the same empathy as she would her own children. She consistently goes the extra mile to insist, instill values of respect among parents, players, and coaches. Amber stands as a true role model, not only for the young women in the league, but for the entire community. Congratulations, Amber. I'd like to invite Gary Flather to join Chairman McKay to present to the Mason District recipients. There he is. Good evening, everybody. Um, <clears throat> my name is Gary Flather. I'm the Vice Chairman of the Athletic Council, and I will do the presentations for the Mason District. Uh, the first is for the female athlete is Carolyn O'Brien. I don't see Carolyn, but I'll go ahead and read her uh, uh, information. Carolyn is a vital part of the Annadale Boys and Girls Club Recreational Soccer Program where she has passionately contributed as both a participant and a coach for an extended period. Her influence goes beyond the field, embodying the principles of good sportsmanship and instilling these values in her teams. Apart from soccer, Caroline demonstrates her versatility and commitment to athletic excellence by participating in NVSL's competitive swimming. Also, as a lifeguard, she emphasizes both responsibility and commitment to safety, and her impact extends to her role as a swim instructor, where she teaches valuable swimming lessons and water safety. Caroline's dedication to sports and her efforts in nurturing both competitive spirit and individual growth make her an outstanding recipient of the Champions of Character Award. Uh,
Next is the male athlete, Bradley McCall. Bradley. There's a tall, strapping young man there. <clears throat> Bradley excels as a team captain, consistently motivating and maintain, maintaining intensity among his players while serving as leader and an exemplary figure for all. He actively collaborates with coaches, dedicating time to assist fellow players in enhancing their skills and nurturing a genuine love and passion for the game. Furthermore, Bradley consistently contributes to the team's collective effort by engaging in post-practice activities like retrieving balls and organizing players to help clean the fields by removing trash. There's something you don't see every day. <laughs> His positive impact extends beyond the current moment, indicating a very promising and positive future ahead. Congratulations. And the Mason District coach, Karen Billingsley. Usually the, van, the fan club comes from one direction. I heard it in both directions. That's pretty good. Karen's commitment to the players in the club is truly exceptional. Her dedication goes above and beyond, exemplified by her initiative in taking multiple teams to Spain, providing players with enriching international experiences. A shining role model, Karen stands as a cornerstone of great character, embodying qualities of leadership and integrity that extend far beyond the sports arena. In the ups and downs of wins and losses, Karen's teams stand out for their collective spirit. Beyond the scores, the emphasis on enjoyment, improvement, and a genuine love for the game creates an atmosphere where every player thrives. Karen's enduring passion and unwavering dedication are not just admirable, they form the bedrock of her leadership. Her impact extends beyond the game, molding not only skilled athletes, but also individuals who carry the essence of sportsmanship throughout their lives. Congratulations. And the parent is Randa Gabber. She was in the top row. In her fifth season as age group soccer commissioner, Randa has consistently demonstrated unwavering, unwavering dedication to the league. Beyond her official role, she stands prepared to serve in any capacity that benefits the league, always doing so with a contagious and genuine smile. Randa's commitment goes beyond the administrative duties and her positive and approachable demeanor sets an uplifting tone for the entire soccer community. Her tireless efforts combined with a willingness to contribute wherever needed make Randa an invaluable asset to the league. Congratulations. Congratulations, uh, Supervisor Daniel Stork and Greg Beckwith to present the Mount Vernon District. Hi, representing the Mount Vernon District, the female athlete is Reese Smith. As Reese makes her way down here, she spells her name R-H-Y-S, <laughs> but Reese is the proper pronunciation. Reese is a signing example of sportsmanship, displaying care and compassion, not only during games, but also in her everyday interactions. 
With a remarkable level of empathy, she genuinely cares for her teammates, forming bonds that go beyond sports. Reese consistently goes the extra mile, providing steadfast support to her fellow players and fostering camaraderie that enhances the team's dynamics. Regardless of the game's outcome, she remains a reliable source of encouragement, demonstrating a common approach that motivates her teammates. Her commitment to fair play isn't just part of her character, it's a guiding principle that defines her actions. Reese's unwavering dedication to upholding the values of integrity and respect is truly commendable, making her a standout symbol of sportsmanship and character. Congratulations, Reese. Um, representing the male athlete from the Mount Vernon District, Graham Swoop. Fort Hunt Youth Lacrosse. Graham told me he's going to Bishop Ireton next year. Uh, Graham uh, is a great team player. When his team did not have a goalie this season, Graham selfishly volunteered to play that position. And if you're a goalie in lacrosse, it hurts. <laughs> Graham faced the challenges and responsibilities of being a goalie with grit and determination throughout the season, and his team made it to the championship game. In that game, his team held a 4-1 lead that evaporated to a 5-5 tie. It went to overtime. His team ended up winning that game, ending Graham's youth lacrosse career with, a, with the joy of victory. Graham's tenacity, hard work, and willingness to put the needs of his team before himself illustrates that he's truly a champion of character. Congratulations, Graham. The Mount Vernon District coach is Kevin Jeffrey. Also coming from the back row. <laughs> you run sprints with your players? <laughs> coach Jeffrey stands out as an invaluable asset, leaving a lasting impact with his exceptional qualities of caring, fairness, and trustworthiness. Kevin's caring nature is truly distinctive as he exhibits genuine concern for the well being and development of each player. Through his compassionate approach, Kevin creates a positive and inclusive environment that fosters the growth of athletes, not only as players, but also as individuals. Kevin's dedication extends beyond the standard expectations. He invests hours addressing concerns with parents and assisting players in understanding the nuances of games and practices, showcasing his commitment to their overall development. Fairness is not just a principle for Kevin, it is a fundamental aspect of his coaching philosophy. He meticulously ensures that every player, irrespective of their skill level or background, is provided with equal opportunities to participate and excel. Kevin's influence within the soccer club is profound, making him a standout figure on and off the pitch. Congratulations. <laughs> And round, rounding out the Mount Vernon District is parent Tina Hopkins. <laughs> Tina Hopkins wears multiple hats, serving as a team manager, volunteer trainer, referee liaison, and vice president on the board. She offers extensive support to both players and families in the club. In her role as manager, Tina coordinates logistical aspects for the team and serves as a voice for families, ensuring alignment and attendance for training and matches. She aids other team managers in navigating various leagues and scheduling. Additionally, as a referee liaison, Tina plays a crucial role in scheduling certification courses for both teens and adults, addressing the nationwide shortage of referees. Her passion, kindness, energy, and dedication make Tina an exceptional individual who deserves recognition for her significant contributions to the Mount Vernon communities, players, and families. Congratulations, Tina.
Congratulations. I'd like to invite Supervisor Dahlia Palachik and Kelly Ego Asawala to present for the Provident Distant District. Good evening. Um, I'm honored to present the Providence District um, Champions of Characters, and we'll start with the female athlete, Helen Klusener. Congratulations. Helen started playing softball at seven in the Vienna Girls Softball League and has become a skilled player with years of dedication. At the age of 12, she became a coach for the VGSL Blast Ball program, showcasing leadership and mentoring abilities well beyond her years. Helen's passion for softball goes beyond personal pursuits. She volunteers at free pitching clinics, sharing her expertise and co contributing to softball community's growth. Helen's impact extends beyond softball. She is an active volunteer in her community, participating in food collections, gift deliveries, and sewing projects for families in need. Helen's commitment to the community, excuse me, to community service is complemented by academic excellence, maintaining straight A's um, at Thorough Middle School. Her contributions to sports, community service, and academics make Helen stand out, deserving recognition at, at at this award ceremony. Her unwavering commitment to personal and collective growth, growth sets a commendable standard for young people in our community. community. Congratulations. <laughs> Next for our male athlete, we have Wes Oxendorf. Wes excels both in sports and community service. Despite starting basketball just two seasons ago, he quickly became a standout player. He earned a spot on McLean's Fairfax County Youth Basketball League Division I team, receiving all league honors. This year, Wes played a crucial role in his team's undefeated 17-0 season, leading them to win the FCYBL championship. As a starting forward on his AAU travel team, Wes contributed to multiple championship w wins in the Mid-Atlantic region. Not just an athlete, Wes is a humble leader who values teamwork. Off the court, he recently organized and donated hundreds of care kits to the homeless. Additionally, Wes maintains also straight A's um, as an honor student status, showcasing his commitment to academic excellence. Wes's well-rounded achievements make him a standout in the in the community, and I can personally attest to that. Congratulations. <laughs> Moving on to the coach, um, Ryan Webb. I know he is unable to make it tonight, but I will go ahead um, and read over this. Over the past seven years, Ryan has served as a coach in the local youth leagues, earning a reputation for being calm, fair, encouraging, deliberate, and successful. Particularly when coaching very young athletes, Ryan employed games as a tool to impart the values of enjoyment, teamwork, and mutual respect. A parent attests that even after their daughter aged out of Ryan's soccer team, she still views him as her favorite coach. Ryan's unique ability to instill confidence has had a lasting impact, propelling young athletes forward in their growth, <clears throat> in their personal growth. Ryan's team have won numerous local tournaments, but his coaching success is not about winning games. It's about fostering a positive experience for every athlete. And um, I'm sure Ryan's out there coaching somewhere right now, which is why he's not here. Um, but I'm honored that he, I'm honored to um, announce his award on, this, on his behalf. And last but not least, and, and last but certainly not least, we have um, parents Nicole and and Chris McGarrickle. Okay. Nicole and Chris 
play a vital role in the success of the Vienna Youth Soccer Program, demonstrating unwavering commitment to making soccer a positive outlet for hundreds of kids, hundreds of kids in the community. Serving as sponsors, volunteer coaches, community leaders, and engaged soccer parents, they serve as exceptional ambassadors for the game in Vienna. Their numerous contribu contributions go beyond the field, making a significant impact on the community. Nicole and Chris extend their generosity by providing scholarship opportunities, ensuring that families facing, fi facing financial challenges can assess the benefits of the VYS program. Their dedication and active involvement make them invaluable assets to the soccer community, and Vienna is fortunate to have such outstanding contributors fostering to the growth and inclusive inclusivity of the sport. Thank you and congratulations. Congratulations. I'd like Gary Flather to join us, join Supervisor McKay to present the Springfield District recipients. Thank you. Welcome again. So as the Vice Chairman, I get to anybody that doesn't get to, doesn't, is not able to be here, I get to show up and, and announce. So I'll do the Springfield District. I know Pat Herity was here earlier, but he had to leave for another meeting. So the first Springfield District uh, recipient for female athlete is Jaisley Tabion. And uh, I know Jaisley cannot be here, but her parents are here. Uh, if they'll come down, uh, Neil and Kathy. James Lee's impressive journey with Braddock Road Youth Club began at the age of 13, where her natural talent quickly made her a top player and team captain over six seasons. She continued her success as a three-year varsity player at Lake Braddock Secondary School, captaining the team during her senior year. Beyond her personal achievements, Jaisley passionately mentored young BRYC uh, players as a volunteer coach and officiated recreation volleyball games during high school. Currently, she's a valuable player at Mary Baldwin University, contributing to the team's success. Jaisley's leadership, commitment, and love for the sport make her a standout individual deserving of this recognition. Congratulations. <laughs> For the male athlete, Connor Cluxton. <laughs> Brought his own cheering club, I like that. Connor is recognized by his coaches as one of the most hardworking players on his team. His commitment to is evident in his consistent practice of being the first to arrive at the field, taking charge of setup and cleanup activities. That's two I've heard doing this kind of stuff, picking up trash and setting things up. This is, that's fantastic. Moreover, he has contributed to the soccer community by serving as a counselor at camps and as an assistant coach for younger players, showcasing his dedication as a role model. Currently a student at West Springfield High School, Connor not only maintains a high GPA, but also actively participates as a varsity soccer player. His exceptional work ethic, leadership skills, and academic achievements make him an outstanding recipient of this award. And the recipient for the coach is Paul Miller. Coach Miller stands out not only for coaching basketball, but for instilling in players the principle of becoming better individuals through the sport. With an impressive coaching tenure spanning 23 years, Paul is renowned for his tough yet fair approach, inspiring players to believe in themselves and explore new possibilities. Recognizing the unique strengths in each player, he motivates them to reach their full potential. 
Paul's dedication extends beyond the court. Every season, he selects a book on achieving goals and crafts personalized notes for each player, emphasizing the importance of personal growth. A mantra echoed across all his team is, it's not I can't, it's I can, I will, I'll try. Furthermore, Paul's impact transcends coaching as he is the founder and current board chair of the nonprofit Hoops for Youth Foundation dedicated to supporting at-risk youth. Congratulations. Springfield parent, David Fields. Looks like David is not here, but he has a good excuse. His son is a freshman getting his first start for the GMU men's soccer team. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> David's unwavering commitment to Springfield South County Youth Club travel program transcends the field with over five years of selfless volunteering amounting to thousands of dedicated hours. His impact is profound and multifaceted, extending beyond coaching to crucial aspects of players' lives. David has become an invaluable resource for numerous families, guiding them through the intricacies of college applications and financial aid forms, thereby facilitating the pursuit of higher education. His dedication further manifests in supporting families and players with travel arrangements for tournaments and showcases. In instances where the logistical challenge demands, David has gone above and beyond personally investing in renting a van and ensuring the player's transfer needs, transportation needs are met. His extraordinary commitment, financial investment, and genuine care for the holistic development of these young athletes exemplify David's outstanding contribution to the SYC travel program. Congratulations. Congratulations. I'd like to invite Kathy Smith and Gary, if you'd like to join us again, <laughs> Chairman McKay, to present the Sully District recipients. Save the best for last, right? All right, Sully District, female athlete, Ava Keegan. Ava is an impressive seventh grader. She shines as a committed multi-sport athlete, showcasing both her athletic skills and her ability to build strong connections with teammates on the field. With a vibrant personality, Ava becomes an instant friend to teammates as soon as she steps onto the playing field. Her passion for sports, especially field hockey, is evident in her continuous pursuit of excellence. Ava's dedication to her athletic development is commendable, seen in her consistent efforts to seek more training, more guidance, and knowledge of the sports that she plays. Her enthusiasm and determination make her a standout young athlete with significant potential deserving of this award. Congratulations, Ava. <laughs> It's a family affair with the Keegans as uh, her father, mother, and sister are all involved in the field hockey program at SYA, so thank you all. Uh, male athlete, Christopher Schaefer. Christopher's nomination is a result of his exceptional competitive, competitiveness and unwavering commitment to giving his best effort. Notably, he stands out as a top runner in the district, and his recent achievement includes securing a spot on the Virginia Valor FC travel soccer program. In addition to his athletic prowess, Christopher excels in academic pursuits, reflecting a well-rounded approach to his education. Furthermore, he recently emerged victorious in the PACER test during his school's PE class, 
highlighting his physical fitness and determination. Christopher's accomplishments and dedication across various domains make him a standout individual deserving of recognition. Uh, for the coach of the Sully District is Samantha Nahn. Uh, Samantha could not be here because she's currently coaching a team. In her four season coaching tenure with Southwestern Youth Association Volleyball, Sam has become a highly respected figure within the organization. Her coaching philosophy revolves around treating every athlete with respect, care, and fairness. Sam is dedicated to building trust among her players and teams, going beyond volleyball skills to instill qualities that extend into being good citizens in the community. Moreover, she implants valuable lessons on fairness, fostering team culture, where teammates that treat each other with equity and integrity. Sam's many contributions make her a valuable member of the SYA program. For the parent, Pam Woodfield, and again, Pam is currently running a concession stand at, uh, <laughs> at a baseball game. Pam is a dedicated volunteer contributing to SYA's Little League Baseball and Softball programs, travel baseball, and wrestling initiatives. Pam and her husband, Chris, consistently stand ready to offer their assistance. Recently appointed, recently, four years ago, she was appointed as a concession stand coordinator Pam showcases remarkable organizational skills to ensure that multiple concession stands are well supplied, appropriately staffed, and operational. And any of you that has run a concession stand knows it's a thankless job. Pam's ever-present smile serves as a testament to her unwavering positivity, making her an invaluable asset to the SWA community. Congratulations to those. What a, an amazing evening and what amazing recipients. Before we conclude for the, for the evening, I'd like to say the nominations are open on our website for the Stephen A. McLaughlin Champions of Character Award. We have sports going on this fall. Don't wait until the deadline in August. Go ahead and nominate those exceptional players now. So with that said, Thank you all for coming. Thank you everybody for attending. It was great recipients, congratulations, and have a good evening.